I'm Kamal Takodra. I'm one of the TMEs. I'm based out of London in the United Kingdom. So in this update around multicast, last week I covered pin bidirectional. So I hope that was all useful to you. Today I'm going to be covering multicast optimization. So let's go into the overview. So uh, I used this slide last time in the pin bidirectional. So some very useful information decoded in here. This is not just definitions. This is a bit of explanation too. So we're today really going to be talking about uh, layer two type of multicast. So here it's uh, IGMP that's important and to a certain respect around uh, queries as well. Uh, which is one of the features. I've just noticed a small typo here, which needs to be adjusted. OK, so. As I said, I've already covered pin by directional last week, and today I'm going to be covering three optimizations that we're having around multicast. One of them is called the querier wait time. The other one is handling of new and old joins so that's aka that's uh, membership reports in igmp and then something called pre-programming which is around uh, improving uh, latency adding star comma g entries into our layer two switches so why do i care about this why is this important well the first thing is we're going to optimize the performance of um, multicast in these environments. And why is that important? Well, multicast is very much a user perspective and they can feel that because they're seeing a stream or they're, they're interacting with something. So it gives us a bit more predictability and deterministic um, use of the specific applications. So when I'm talking about latency, when you're talking about multicast this is not the packet switching throughput this is really the good feeling that you get and getting the packets at a timely manner to the user effectively so it's not how many packets per second i can switch basically and I've really covered this. So why is it important? So it's a better user experience. So if you look at video streams, they're having reduced delays. So you could have channel changing, for instance, in a video stream. Uh, again, that's if it's multicast based, then you get that stream quicker. You could have field operations. So say, for instance, you're in a quick pop up in a in a, uh, a situation where you have to quickly set up a network. Um, so you have a command and control which has some multicast in there. So you have some sort of monitoring uh, around the perimeter of your camp or whatever, be it a military situation, could be important there. And then things like financial markets where you have uh, market data and ticker information coming in. Again, very critical because financial decisions are made on data available and you have arbitrage uh, when you're having financial um, data come through. So that's why it's important um, and milliseconds count in these uh, situations. So. First of all, before we go into this, uh, it's important that, you know, we all know our networks, but it's good to have a bit of a refresher and I'm going to do a bit of a refresher around uh, the layer two technology and IGMP multicast because that's what these optimization optimizations are about. So uh, let's quickly go through. So in terms of IGMP2, we have a querier and a non-querier, which we see in this basic diagram on the right. We have the querier on the left and the non-querier on the right. OK, so the non-querier is a passive device that sits on the network and listens and records. And typically, if you have two devices on a segment like this, then typically uh, if you're in a PIM sparse mode, you have a designated router, which is typically will be on the non-querier because it will be a higher IP address. 
Um, and if you want to pin by directional, that will be the designated forwarder. So we have queries, which is effectively the active device, and that exchanges IGMP or MLD messages between the querier over here on the left and the hosts here sitting on the segment. So just trying to really emphasize the querier element so you, you know about that. Now let's talk about IGMP. We have four types of messages when we have um, IGMP and that's broken down a bit further too. So um, you have something coming from the querier. So there are querier messages that go from the querier to the hosts. And what type of query messages we have? We have two types of querier messages. We have a general query, which checks for multicasts on a segment and um, general query is a IGMP version one messages. So that's the original IGMP. Um, and then we invented IGMP version two and that has more of a focused uh, and it's really have we have group specific queries so we can check for specific groups rather than checking the whole of the segment effectively. So that's the query of messages. Then we also have, so we have uh, also have host messages. So that's the green arrows going towards the query. And we have uh, a number of type of messages for that. So uh, in version one, we have a membership report. So IGMP version one hosts. And we also have uh, version two membership reports and the membership reports are basically joined. So they're used interchangeably in the language of multicast. And then uh, IGMP version two also brought us a leave group. So you can message and say, I want to leave this group. And then it goes into a vicious circle because once you say I'm going to leave the group, then the query of queries, are there any more members of that group who are still there? And we carry on sending the multicast. And if there are no responses to that query, then that multicast stream stops getting sent. So another important thing to know is that joins, aka membership reports, can also be what's known as unsolicited. So that means I can join the group without having a query first. So it's like me picking up the phone and ringing you. OK, so I'm making the call. I want to join that call. And then IGMP version two and MLD uh, really, although I've titled this IGMP version two, work in pretty much a similar manner. So really that's just a refresher. And now, now that we're armed with that information, we're going to go into and look at the optimization. So first thing I want to talk about is something called a querier wait timer. Well, what is that? Well, this is the time that we wait before we elect a querier. So I showed earlier that we have a query, but there's a waiting time before we actually become a query. Now in CX, the default time to become a query on a segment is 250 seconds, and that's not negotiable prior to 1013. So it takes a quite a while to get and become the query and then start to send data on that segment. So when does the query await timer really occur? So th there's a few times that can occur. So if we reboot the box or we power on the switch or we have an outage, we have to wait for the query await timer. This 250 seconds, which is a long time in a uh, network. Also, if you have a protocol restart or a crash or you do a OIR, which is an online insertion and removal of a card on a VLAN, that could cause us to have a query wait time event. And then obviously there's the initial configuration when you test and turn up and you, you come and 
do your initial configuration, you have to wait for the query or wait timer. So a very important fact is the query of wait timer is is overridden if you configure PIM on the device. That's why I was saying it's very important. This is all about layer two multicasts. If I have PIM here, then that we override the query await timer and we go straight into the election process of choosing the query on a specific segment. So we can see here on the right, I've just done a show IGMP interface and I, uh, it's quite easy to catch this initial wait time, which takes quite a long time. And then after I've gone from the initial wait time, I've done that after the 250 odd seconds, and then I've elected the query on that segment. It's just to try and show you that you can actually physically go and see that on your switches when you first reboot them or switch them on or configure it. So what's the real use case? Because it's quite, it's, it's really more layer two and you think, well, I, I use PIM most of the time. Well, not always, right? So if you're, if you've got a layer two VNI only, okay, and you're using IGMP and MLD and something happens and or you want to have uh, not wait for the query or wait timer so it can have an impact in that type of situation and then uh, the initial faster if you just want to boot up but really i would say the second use case is more relevant um, data centers if you've got multicast really where you've just got a layer two vni and maybe in some campus situations as well so because the query can change it's elected only by the lowest ip address so if something happens and then a lower ip address turns up after a while you got to wait for the query wait timer so we got now voila we have a configurable wait timer so supported on all platforms which is nice supports both uh, v4 and v6 igmp and mld no restrictions supports vxlan non vxlan and i said it's uh, 1000 one one to 300 seconds so you can be very aggressive or you can extend it even longer if you wish and it's very simple configuration you go into the interface of interest and then uh, you just change you add the query wait timer and you give the timer that you wish and very similar if you're doing uh, mld and here's the ipv6 version so that is the first optimization let's now go into our second optimization so our second optimization is titled handling of old and new joins aka membership reports so at the moment, um, new joins aren't prioritized over existing or older joins. Um, so what we want to do is prioritize new joins, which really means in effect, that's new groups within the environment. And we're trying to improve the latency here. Again, supported on all platforms, uh, supports both V4 and V6 and no configuration required as of 10.13 this is on by default the third optimization i'm talking about going to talk about is something called a pre-programming of star comma g bridge bridge entries so what we're going to first do is look at what happens prior to us programming any entries and let's look at the normal behavior of a switch so it's a cross platform so what will happen is i've got an igmp join from a client and that's going internally into the switch to port towards a cpu and then i over on the left i have a multicast stream coming in now that multicast stream gets punted to the cpu and together with that punt to the CPU and as well as the IGMP stream incoming, 
we do something called a program or what they call data driven decision and we pre pro we program that bridge entry into hardware once we've pre -pro once we've programmed that into the hardware the multicast stream then flows as a through the hardware so what we are now doing in 1013 is we are doing something called a pre-program so you're going on the command line and you're saying i'm going to put this entry in for these igmp or we put in a star comma g because you don't know what the source is um, so source group we enter star comma g in cli so once that happens you're actually multicast stream is coming in and immediately we get a program into hardware of a star comma g group so the cpu so the multicast stream on the left doesn't punt up to the cpu goes straight and goes into hardware uh, through the hardware effectively uh, because we've pre-programmed this bit so we've eliminated a step effectively so what this allows us to do well it removes the removal of this pre -pro the programming via the cpu improves the join latency so the multicast streams access faster there's a less initial packet drop as well which is important so when you initially join that stream you get a slightly less packet drop because it's pre-programmed and there is a side benefit uh, a spin off a bit you get a slightly less overhead at that infinitesimal point on the cpu too so let's um, look at how do we pre-program this so it's very simple uh, under the igmp snooping there's an extended command you just say pre-program star g which stands for star comma g flow enable now um, just a note so if you're doing this on a vsx pair you need to put this command on both primary and secondary is the recommendation platform supported as below so it's all with the exception of the a320 a325 and 84 onwards are not supported so let's have a quick look and i've called this troubleshooting but it's really just to expose what it looks like so you get a view of it so i've got this layer 2 uh, vsx um, stack and i've got two sources vlan 12 and vlan 13 and i've got two receivers vlan 100 and vlan 116 and we're really interested only in vlan 100 and 116 just to show you these are the sources and you can reference these sources in these diagrams you'll see the source address here is relevant to the source addresses on this example so first of all i'm not going to do anything at all and i'm just going to set the multicast streams and i'm going to join the groups and i'm going to see what happens so on our layer two switches you can you can run the command show ip igmp snooping so the extension to that is packet exceptions if you run that command you will see what's hitting the cpu on a layer two switch so we can see for these sources that I defined earlier that and the different groups on the left for the respective VLANs, we can see the packet count. We can see we got 400 packets hit on VLAN 100 and then we've got some more on the other VLAN for the different groups. So that's got, I've got S comma G entries in there at the layer two device. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop everything. I'm going to pre program on VLAN 116 only. So I've pre programmed on VLAN 116. I've left VLAN 100 alone on this VSF switch. That's why I'm doing the pre programming here. Now I've started all the streams 
and the multicast and the IGMP join and we have a look at the output and we do a show IP IGMP snooping packet exceptions. This time, the VLAN I haven't touched, still we have 404 packets hit the CPU, but we have no packets hit the CPU for VLAN 116. And we can see zero seconds in terms of it's because it's not hit the CPU, but the other one about 20 seconds here it shows when it was last seen. So that shows you how that is used and you can visualize it a bit better, I guess, and that certainly helped me visualize it too. So what's next? So a word of where to and where not to configure it. So trying to emphasize this is a layer two technology. It's only applicable, the pre-programming on the layer two switch. And here's my output from the packet exceptions below that we saw earlier. You do not need to put it programmed on a switch that has got multicast routing on it. It is not going to help you whatsoever. You might have the VLAN that's got the snooping enabled. You don't need to configure it. That's all this is trying to emphasize is where do you program it? Only on the layer two switches. This is a layer two multicast optimization only. Thank you. I hope that was useful and informative for you.